Hey, sluggies. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but Trash Tuesday will be at the Regent Theater in LA August 4th. Please go get your tickets now. I can't wait to meet every single one of our slugs. I'm really excited. It's going to be a great show. It's going to be interactive. We're going to play games. It's just going to be an amazing night. It's going to be so fun. There's going to be games, laughter, swimming, dancing, new merch. Yeah, we have a lot planned and it's a little scary for me, but we're going to be doing a lot of audience interaction. We're going to be doing Q&A. Um, we have games that we're going to be playing and there'll also be just like a live podcast element. We have a lot of stuff planned. It's going to be really fun. And also there's a little bit of a roasting section. You'll have to wait and see. Um, but I love you guys and I can't wait to see you this Friday at the Regent Theater in Los Angeles. You guys, at Trash Tuesday, we love Liquid Death. And our listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase. This is an offer that is available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash trash. Exclusions may apply. That's liquiddeath.com slash trash. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off their first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code trash. Find out why over 3,500 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com promo code trash. That's Nutrafol.com promo code trash. Hi slugs, happy August. I am on tour and I'm going to be in Oxnard August 27th. Eh? And uh, then I'll be in DC, Boston, Wisconsin, San Diego, Chicago, Detroit, San Jose, and Irvine. Get tickets at estherandice.com. Mwah. Hello, Sluggies. We had such a fun time today. I am so excited to be out on the road doing the Welcome to Annie Wood tour. You can actually see me tonight. I have a Annie and Friends show at the Comedy Store in the main room. It's probably sold out. Um, you also can see me in Philadelphia, August 11th and 12th. I'll be in Calgary at the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival, August 27th. I'll be in San Francisco, Austin, um, La Jolla, a bunch of other places. Just go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows and you can see me every Thursday on Annie Wood. I just bought like a suction cup thing for cellulite. We'll see if it helps. Oh wait, does wait, it work? The cupping thing. Would yeah. I ask you a question? Have you done the other thing? Um, endermology. Endermology and yeah, does it work? Yeah, I did, but it, it's like, it's expensive and you have to do it so consistently that my schedule, I was like, I can't. What is it? Just like a really deep massage? It's basically, all of the things is breaking up. Like, I don't know exactly what it's breaking up, but it's it's like suctioning your, it's like, you know, like the cups, you like Chinese medicine cups. Yeah. If you ran them across your leg. And then the endermology um, machine. Yeah, it's like a suction. And you put this like really kind of hot, gauzy thing on. I don't know why it is so attractive. It looks like- Do you have any pictures of you on it? I sure do, girl. <laughs> um, it was like a, an accidental thirst trap. I was like, ooh, I didn't realize I was gonna look so hot in this full bandage. <laughs> it kind of makes me like get why guys always hit on you when you're injured. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Wait a second, you're in what? full, they bandage you up completely? It looks like a bandage. It's like a It's like a white sock that you put on basically. Oh, I've worn one sock. of those before, but since when do guys hit on you when you're injured? I know okay. guys have never hit on you. So. <laughs> no, no, no. I always have had that experience where it's like, if I get a broken leg or broken foot, it's like, whew, they come out. What is that? A wounded bird. She oh. can't defend herself or run I can't away. Run away. I honestly, because at first I was like, this is so sweet. They want to help me. But then there was no actual help. It was just kind of hanging around, being really slow about driving me home. I remember my friend Chris. <laughs> I broke my foot. I can't believe I must have told this on here before. I broke my foot peeing in the woods once. No, you have um, definitely have not told okay, this story. Okay, I was in. Uh, I was. When I was How do in Santa I know Bay. you? That is the weirdest story ever. <laughs> like we should never have met. That someone was in the woods doing something <laughs> active enough that they might have broken their foot. Yeah, that's so <laughs> dangerous. No, I was. Um, I went to Pecos. I was living in New Mexico. I was living in Santa Fe. We went to Pecos to this like cabin. My ex boyfriend was there with like his. I don't know if it was a family. I don't know why I was there, but it was my <laughs> ex boyfriend. We weren't together anymore, but we were just friends. It was my ex boyfriend his friend Chris, and someone's parents. So you were on a trip with your ex-boyfriend and you don't know why. I don't know why I was there. It was like a, yeah, I don't know who invited me, why I was, I'm sure it was Sounds like, like no invite. one. <laughs> I had to get there though, because it was just one truck. I, I don't know why I we I can were. relate to this though. I'm going on a trip with my ex next week and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it's just sort of like, we 
like each other. We like each other. Yeah, we like each other. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, but it does, you know? I, I, you know, it got, I, 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 it got weird though because, okay, so then we were leaving and this was my like, this was an ex that I held very like special to my heart for so long and I finally had to just like, I had to just like, slice him up, behead him, kill him in my, like I had to just stop giving a shit about him because it was like, why am I still focused on this person? I would always go back to him or whatever. Did can I ask? in the woods? What? what? Did, was there a murder in the woods? <laughs> oh, no, wait, yeah. He's alive. He's probably well. I don't know. I don't talk to him too much anymore. Wh I really why? I <laughs> why am I keeping you? Why do you think you were so hooked on him that you had to like, you know, kill him in your mind? Because do is it, I had this theory that like, if we are so obsessed with someone, it's because like they were rejecting of you and that like it was like the slot machine thing where sometimes they liked you and sometimes they didn't. Was it that or do you feel like you have a different reason why? Um, I think we had like a really weirdly romantic kind of crazy story of how we met. And he also was like the first person I dated after that stuff happened to me in high school. Oh, and wow. he was just really um, he's very annoying and there's always a woman next to him very angry at him but even though he is that type of annoying dude he is very sweet and he was very loving to me and very like so it was it almost sounds like he was there for you he was like the only guy i had dated who was really like encouraging my art and like there was just like things okay. on me mm. i really liked he made me feel really beautiful really really loved like all these things and he was very like that patience is intoxicating. Yeah. I know. That is one of the reasons why, like, the one of the last guys that I recently dated, I could not break it off no matter how hard I tried because he really did make me feel so pretty. Like, no matter how much, like, if I had gained weight or whatever, it just... Who are these monsters making her feel ugly? <laughs> <laughs> we should have them on. <laughs> but the reason that it ended was because he was just a little too possessive. Like yeah. there was jealousy. There were things there where I was like, okay, like long term, I don't think this is going to yeah. work because like if we're not even official and this is happening, like I can only imagine what it's going to be. Feeling like. suffocated in any way or watched. It's just like for me, it's just I monitored. I think some people might find that hot, like maybe no. if they've had a different history with men where they weren't like that. But yeah. for me, I feel so... It was like the guy I told you where he like didn't want me to smoke cigarettes, which is like a normal thing. But for some reason, the way he said it, it made me smoke so many cigarettes. I was like, I'm going to get fucking lung cancer at you, bitch. You know, like I just was right. like, but I think with um with my ex in Santa Fe. Yeah, I was very young when I met him. And then I never really like um found that sort of like loving consistency from a guy for a while so i think i kept going back to him and idolizing mm. that sort of way he made me feel and obviously like we were like i think i was 18 when i dated him or something so we were really young so it wasn't like we were gonna but it was really we just had like he had he was from this place in vermont where my mom's best friend is from from high school and um his his when i'm well, I guess actually, let me back this up a little bit. So when we were driving to Santa Fe to look, to move me to Santa Fe, my parents and I took an RV and drove all my stuff out. And we stopped at this, um, I think I told the story. I don't think so. I'd never, I don't remember you breaking anything in the woods. <laughs> this is so, I know I've gone way back, but anyway, I'll just go fast. Um, I don't need to romanticize too long about ex-boyfriends, but... Um, if you're going to make me fall in love, <laughs> I might try and find him. <laughs> I'm sure you can take him from whoever's very mad standing next to me. <laughs> just looking at him like, you fucking asshole. But um, no, so he, he just has a very weird name. And my mom was like, we were like joking about when I went to Santa Fe, I was wearing this like engagement ring that was my mom had found in her purse that was like she had taken out of a safety deposit box that was like my grandmother's or something. And I was just wearing it and my mom like spun this tale, this like joke about how I was gonna meet this guy and she just picked the craziest name. I'm just, I'm releasing this man so I'm not gonna say his name, it's such a weird name. I just don't want him to need to be attached to me ever again, this poor guy. He got, gave me a good 20 years of this, so. But um, she was, so my mom was like, you're gonna meet this. And she just made up the most ridiculous name you could even imagine. And my first party in Santa Fe, this guy was like, hey, I'm, and it was that name. Are you like, serious? I was like, it was really weird. And this is the guy? This, Yeah, and I was like, oh my God. And I like pulled him aside, I was like, my mom, like this whole thing just happened. Like we're engaged, like, 
and it was this joke. And then when he tells the story, it, like that's where I like get like a little bit like, because eh. he would always tell the story and he'd be like, all right, so we're at this party and all there's like just this circle of guys. And then it like parts and it's just this like hot girl just being so funny and so cool. And like, I just pushed my way through and I'm like, who are you? And I tell her my name and she's like, we're engaged. And so it was like, always like cute the way he would say Okay, that. what you're describing, I describing is basically super dangerous because if you're meet cute with somebody yeah. is that good up front it even no matter what they're like after that point you're gonna keep coming back <gasps> to the beginning kind of and I romanticizing yes. that because it was such a good story you know like the story was i have so been good. there i have been there i hung on way too long with a guy because i just thought that our story was so like picture perfect why do our brains do this to us because we watch like movies when we were little and it's you know like you think don't you remember like being in i remember being in elementary school and being like i can't wait to be like a teenager and have a boyfriend like you just yeah. don't even know what it yeah. is you know yeah so how you meet someone really sort of like um, dictates how long what you're willing to put up with yeah. in that relationship because like imagine meeting a guy in a very boring way um, it's easier to let it go yeah you're like how'd you meet I don't even remember how we met how did we <laughs> like you know what I mean like but that's why I think there's this term like I learned not that long ago it's called limerence mm -hmm. and it's that that pure obsessive f feeling for somebody and I think a lot of when I've felt that in the past for somebody it's because the beginning was just so picture perfect right and limerence in is supposed to kind of be not a good thing right good it's like thing. you're in a state of crushing obsession yeah I fantasy think it, yeah, yeah i definitely don't i mean i i think it's cute and i'm like i definitely like love the person i was that that felt love for this person but i definitely don't i i grew out of it and i <laughs> and i look back and i go like oh god i like I mean, this guy really, I, I yanked him back in a couple of times. He's like, what are you? He's like, I'm back here again? Like, you'd be like, oh my God. I can really relate to this. I have definitely done this because I, I just was so fixated on the beginning. But yeah. how did you break bones but we, in the but woods? More, <laughs> okay, so then, okay, so this was the guy, right? Also, by the way, so his, his mom, or my mom's friend from, this gets crazier. So that, we meet that way. We start dating. Then his mom... I, we're talking to his parents or whatever, and it, we find out that my mom's friend from from high school had been at a bike race, and her and her friend were giving like Gatorade to the bikers, and an elderly woman put her car in reverse accidentally and ran them over, oh, fuck. killed my mom's friend's friend. Oh my, my god! My mom's friend's pelvis was like crushed. What? She's doing okay now. My parents are actually in Canada with them right now. They're on an island with this woman right now, but she she was really she was in the hospital for like six months, and. My ex-boyfriend's dad was a is a famous or a successful sculptor, and he made the memorial for that woman who passed away. Yeah, and that's what we found out. Like there was just like un like there would just be like another thing and another thing, and I'd be like, oh, I guess like the universe is like twin flame. We're, we're like supposed to be together, and and um. And I then just want to say yeah. that I would absolutely die if even one of these coincidences happened with the guy. <laughs> so I I just power to you for even moving on in any capacity because i've never had anything like even... he's so annoying <laughs> it's like he's actually so but he he became rejecting of me like later on when i kept coming back in and being like hey remember me we're like supposed to be together or whatever and he'd okay be like, sorry keep going keep going no, no no but like but it was like but i know what you're but i, I it would was hard i would hang so hard on to those things yeah. but i i this is like a whole like twin flame situation i want to put a pin in it and definitely talk about it after we get to the bone. Okay, so <laughs> so he wanted me to go somewhere. I always we were friends forever, whatever. And he, um, we drove to Pecos. We hung out with whoever these elderly people were. They were not his parents. I don't know who they were. They're probably my age now, but <laughs> uh, the people that seemed old. And we're driving back. I think I had had one beer. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't high. I was just regular. And I went. We stopped to pee. I went into the woods, I peed, I didn't get any splashback on me. <laughs> and I was so proud of myself. Miracle, it is no, a miracle. No, but it was a miracle. I was dry, I dried out, I, I you know, I air dried, I put my <laughs> underwear on, I couldn't believe it. I usually piss all over myself when I try to pee in the woods. And so I leapt like triumphantly out of the woods, like to these two guys, it's just Chris and, and I don't wanna say the crazy name. And I, I leap out and I'm like, woo, and um, 
I just fell right on my foot. I just broke the shit out of my foot. And I was like, you know, like 20 feet from the car. I had to like army roll or army crawl <laughs> back to the fucking, I was so hurt. And then I get in, I'm like sitting in between them in the stupid truck. And, and my friend Chris like does not want to be a part of this. Like, well, cause he, I feel like guys are the worst. If you're hurt around guys, they don't know what to do. Like I they're said, just like, I'm so hard. What do I do? <laughs> I, how do I drive and have this heart of a bone? So easy to catch her. She's army crawling. <laughs> but it was like, but so, but, but, um, can we just bleep a name out? Okay, so <laughs> was like, um, I, I just like it's so hard. I'm gonna, it, I'm gonna, like, sorry, is it short for? <laughs> no, but that was the joke. No, it's <laughs> parents just made the name up. Oh, and your mom made that name up. Yeah, she was like, you're gonna meet, and this was like a running bit the whole time we were driving out. It was like crazy, and then it was like he was the second person I met at the school. I was like. And then him and these guys were like fighting over me. They were like, as the you were crawling family. away, <laughs> <laughs> they were over me at this point. But then they got under me again. If you ever break a bone and you're in a truck with two guys, just take a gun out and kill yourself because <laughs> they are never going to help you. No, no, no. They hurt themselves all the time and they do nothing about no, it. No, did help me, but Chris was like, Chris was like, you're fine. Literally, you can see like the bone is like it's so swollen, and you can just I know it's broken. I've broken this bone before. I was like, it's broken. We need to go to the hospital. And Chris is like, ah, you know. <laughs> It's definitely, we have history, so he's like, all right, I better fucking not have to deal with this bitch. But so we go to the hospital, Chris leaves, and she stayed with me for a really long time. But then, so that subsequent two months, three months of this injury, I remember going, they lived together and going over there because he was taking care of me for a while. And then he was like, I can't, I like no longer have the capacity to do this. To take care of you. I mean, he was at the hospital and he was like staying at my house and stuff, like sleeping over. And it was just like, well, yeah, we weren't going to like what they're not going to take care of you. Yeah, like. <laughs> he did as much as he could. But it's like, are we going to be like serious boyfriend and girlfriend? again? It it's was just sort of like it was like it was like the role of like a husband. Who sings that taking. song? Limit to your love. But wasn't yeah. he 18? At this point, this was years later. So we we're probably like 24 or something at this point. 23. Yeah, don't. And, but I will tell you what he he did like to play a lot, play this with me too because he would have a girlfriend and his girlfriend would like go to the bathroom or something and he would be all talking to me or he'd be like I'd be like um, jealous of some girl like I'd be like oh how's your like girlfriend or whatever he'd be like it's not like how we were you know I'd be like how we were yeah. <laughs> oh yeah he kept he baiting you in for a while I mean so, when I went back recently and he was like I went back like four years ago and he was like. Okay. So I kind of want to talk yeah. about this because I know that people are really wrapped up in the whole idea of a twin flame. And are you familiar with? I think it's unhealthy. Yes, oh. I've heard of it. I've always wanted it. I've never come. Okay, I've been close to having it. I've been fully wrapped up. Maybe in the twin idea. flames is your guys' breath when it's. Clear. <laughs> this could be right. Yeah. So twin flame is the idea that someone you, there was once upon a time one soul split in half. Oh my god! Right. So, so basically, so Esther, there's someone out there for you that is is a mirror to your soul. It's the problem, Rick Glassman, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, is that I could literally be twin flames with literally anyone I meet. Like, I will just so find a way. How did, there are different ways you can figure out if someone is your twin flame or not. This is the theory, right? One of it is like, you can't you can't stand them. Like, you know, you're like, is he so yeah. annoying? Because Maybe Rick's my twin flame then. <laughs> <laughs> because they basically reflect a lot of who you are you're almost the same soul you're the same thing so it's like yeah, it's usually when you're in a relationship with them it's very tumultuous but i wanted to talk about it because i was listening to dr romani i listened to all of her stuff about like narcissists and whatnot right but she basically says a lot of people who um subscribe to the idea of like oh this person my partner is my twin flame tend to have a difficulty leaving narcissistic relationships because they really believe that they kind of like hang in abusive relationships longer because they subscribe to the idea that, no, this is supposed to be hard because this is my twin flame and I'm sticking to it. I've had one of those relationships, oh. I feel like, where it's like, you're so like, there's such a connection on this one right. level that you kind of overlook. But see, isn't that connection then like something that we all think is this special connection, but it's actually like like a toxic... I'll give yeah. you an example. Like, I feel so. very, very similar with Annie where like there's almost so much like random things that you're like wait like what do you call it when something is just so so much alignment in how things happen for instance i met a boy right he was pigeon-toed like me had the same heart arrhythmia as me like everything about Poor him kids. We, used to, <laughs> we used to call each other like sibs it was like hey, in the sib, ward 
when we were friends, it was like, hey, Sib, hey, Sib, hey, Sib. We were that identical. And we ended up, we started hooking up. Every and- Sib hooks up with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a gateway drug for you to be brother, sister. I know. Maybe he knew that. <laughs> Um, so pick up so identical. Like we were almost like I looked at him and I'm like, I hate him so much because I think I like hate myself. And then we got into a very, very beautiful, but often like toxic cycle of like bullshit. Like I didn't like the way like he would speak to me, but I hung in there because we really believed we were twin flames. Yeah. I hung in there and I'm like, why am I letting him talk to me this way? That's okay. I, I'm probably just I would tell myself, I probably need to hear it. And I probably just need to like withstand all of this, like the way he's speaking to me, um, because I I would like justify it in my head. And then I would show the text messages to someone else and they'd be like, you need to block this person. My uh, I had my yeah. phone like deleted all these text messages from this one ex-boyfriend, not the one in Santa Fe, that my like crazy, crazy, my most heated relationship I've ever had. But my phone just deleted. Like, I think my phone was like, we th- we can't have this. <laughs> Apple <laughs> was like, we can't have this. It was out. wild. Or maybe he went back when the unsend came. He was like, ooh, <laughs> shit, unsend, unsend. <laughs> he was like a poet. It was wild. You can't date writers. You can't date people that are that good because they will fucking hurt you in a way that you have. You are like, <laughs> I was always like, damn, dude, that was good. So there's this crazy beverage brand out there called Liquid Death, and it looks just like beer. You may have seen these tall boy cans with skulls on them from Liquid Death at festivals, concerts, bars, or maybe even on Zoom calls. Why is it called Liquid Death? Because it's death to plastic and it murders your thirst. They make mountain water, flavored sparkling water, and now they even have iced tea, which comes in three flavors, Grim Leafer, Rest in Peach, and Armless Palmer. Look. Liquid Death is awesome. It's this new beverage out. It looks like beer. I myself don't drink alcohol, so I get to have the cool feeling of cracking open a cold one. I feel like I fit in. It fits right in my hand like a beer used to. I can even drive with it because it's just water. And I'm thirst quenched. All of you suckers might be hungover. And tomorrow I am going to be hydrated and feeling good. Thanks to Liquid Death. You can find Liquid Death's healthy beverages on Amazon or at a retailer near you. And Trash Tuesday listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash trash. Exclusions may apply. That's liquiddeath.com slash trash. Are you tired of dealing with thinning hair? I know I am. When I got off birth control, um, when I turned 30, my hair started to just fall off my head. Thankfully for Nutrafol, I've been able to really see some great improvements. You guys, I love hair and I love having it and I love looking at it. And that's why I love Nutrafol, okay? Because Nutrafol is not a gimmick. It's not a get rich quick scheme. You take it and you wait and you're patient and you get results. A lot of women are impacted by thinning hair. It don't, you know, there's no need to be embarrassed or feel ashamed. Nutrafol is a healthy, happy, safe way to actually get your hair back the right way. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code TRASH. Find out why over 3,500 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com, promo code TRASH. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code TRASH. I have been, like, trying to make Dave my twin flame for 11 years, and I've made 0% progress, but, like, you all... You try to look like him? <laughs> all the times I'm, like... Do you think we're soulmates? He's like, there's no such thing as soulmates. I love Dave. He's He's like, he just cuts up. But don't you think that's important to have like, because you guys are alike and different. I feel like with Todd, the reason Todd is like my guy is because he is fucking calm, cool, collected. Like my other boyfriends that are like me that are like, oh, it's the the worst. You cannot. No, it's impossible. But Todd, we're alike and where sometimes I'm cracking up because Todd will be like screaming. Have you noticed how loud Todd is? Todd will be talking to people. He's screaming. He's laughing. He's louder than everyone at the party. And I'm like, it's just so funny that I found another loudie. Just together, <laughs> we're just the loudest people that have ever existed. Me and Dave together just eating onions. <laughs> That's what we do. Farting and eating onions. <laughs> but yeah, I like, I, uh, I'm now like, how have I never had a twin flame exchange? Is, is it, does it have something to do with like, because I didn't have one 
early in life. It doesn't have to be a romantic partner. It can be someone you never get. Maybe into. it's Christina. I think Henny's no, right. I think we're it's, very different. I think it's I think it's Rick. What the fuck? That's gross. I was kidding. I, you were? But and maybe. I think maybe definitely for a period of time, Benji and I were like had a twin flame, like a platonic twin flame thing where it was like dislike but also like so much fun together maybe. so we were twin flames at one point too yeah like maybe <laughs> it's like a friend thing for me i guess that makes. i sense. just think the idea that there's this one like like i i mean i don't know i don't know how to say this it just is like i do feel like those like fiery things are just like not not I'm the thing. I was no so shit, addicted. No shit, yeah. They're terrible. I mean, I found Todd in the basement. You know what I mean? I was like, no, there's but, my man. No, but that's exactly it. I've learned in my 30s or even recently single that like, I really just want like a quiet, no fireworks kind Dr. of beginning. Dr. Drew told yeah. you this. <laughs> They're like, I'm like, he's married. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's so true where it's like, I've always dismissed that before as like, oh, he's going to bore me or... The, but I'm like, wait a second. Like, I don't bore me. And even like, that I guy that the... you were dating seemed like he was that. But then he came in with the like anxious. With anxious stuff. attachment yeah. stuff. Like, And by the way, he's like incredibly yeah, sweet course, and kind yeah. and wonderful. Just like not a match for me um, because I am somebody who needs to be allowed to like fly. Right. Like I, you cannot try and tell me I, I can't do certain things. Yeah, one might because... say swim. <laughs> or swim. swim but back basically. to limerence too like this is a big thing i've been learning because a lot of the young girlies on tiktok talk about like how they're in situationships and basically like limerence is at play there because you get so addicted to the guy or the girl who's only responsive like some of the time yeah. and that is, it just blows my mind. I'm like, I wish I, that's such a life hack. I wish I knew when I was in my 20s of like the so guy. do it to people? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Get them obsessed with you? Yes. Thank you. You have a trail of ducklings behind you. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's the only response, you know, every other oh. day or like that gets, you're just, it's and then not. You're, going, you're like, are they doing this on purpose or are they? Yeah. Oh. And I, just, by the way, um, go ahead. that is. Like, we would never fall for that bullshit. Today. No. No. Are you kidding? Uh, Hell she's no. She's been with me. I've fallen for that. <laughs> I I've, I have too in the past, but not, not at now. this age. Oh I'd be God. like, oh, but it's fuck recent. Off. It's since Todd. Like, Todd came in perfect timing for me. But, like, the guy I was seeing before Todd was doing that to me so hard. And that, like, I don't know if he was doing it at me or whatever, but I was, like, activated i remember being mm -hmm. like i'm gonna i feel sick like i felt like sick from it yeah i was like i'm gonna die it's so funny i wanted to talk about this but i today i was thinking about it because i feel like we talk about our exes a lot on here and i want to be careful to be like everything that's happened with my exes has been me going through something and other people are there kind of like showing them to me it's like i can call them all assholes if i want but i don't think they're all assholes at all you know it's just like what was it about me that let myself be in that but with the last guy, I remember like I, it was like a, what happened was I was staying at my friend's house, one of my best friends. He was letting me crash at his house. And he was like, can you just do this one favor for me? Can you just watch my cat? And I was like, sure. And then I fucking forgot about the cat. Cause I was at this guy's house being like, do you like me? Do you like me? Do you like, and I fucking, my friend was like, did you feed my cat? And I'm like, oh my God, like I forgot about my friends. It was like, there was no, I was like, got so obsessed with like trying to get this guy to like me. And I didn't even know if I liked him. Right. I was just like, I need to get this answer because- It's a dopamine hit too. Yeah, and I yeah. just felt so bad. And that's when I was like, okay, this is like a wake up call. Like a living thing got abandoned by me. No, it's, I would like ditch my family. I would ditch anyone for when that one guy would call and be ready for you. And almost like as a PSA to all the young girly pops watching, like if a guy takes more than 24 hours to get back to you ever once, and there isn't, it's not like some rare, random, specific reason, like that is such a red flag to me i feel like in the beginning sometimes guys are are more loving but are trying to like hold back because they don't want to give you the ick by coming on too hard in the beginning too though no, i feel like any in the beginning game, for me no any game no it's like a real a mature adult will interact with you will like not play a game or pull back right. i just think that's so i'd rather I know, I know you don't, I guess you are right. You have to do a dance in the beginning of the like beginning, not coming just on too cause, strong. Because you are like, sometimes you're just so into the person in the beginning and you just don't want to like. 
But I saw this one thing about this guy who would literally strategically wait 24 hours after each message and then respond. And like he that that girls went crazy for it. And it's like, that's sick. Ick. Well, these guys also have to there's like all of these these things online about how to get girls. There's so many men that aren't born charismatic. They don't they're not good looking. They don't have their swag. Like, so they're going They're They're like, I got to figure out some way to like get girls. A you lot know? of these. It's guys. not always nefarious. I don't think I think sometimes it's just like an incel trying to get his get out, trying to be an outcell. Incels get out. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know. Um, no, but um, remember the that guy, the pickup artist? Mm -hmm. Like that is somebody that like people that I love, like Gilbert fully like that was like his bible right like, and that's like, so you're like you should i should have known when you had a feather in your top hat <laughs> <laughs> but i'm just saying like like imagine all the misinformation these they're now men but these boys were getting at that time of like play all the games and this is how you get the girl and i just think that like nothing makes me hornier than consistency Same. and knowing that i trust you with my body and that i trust you with like no matter where we're at even in the beginning like i just need to know that you are going to call me the next day that we're going to talk yeah. that like nothing makes me hornier i know i do like that i did i think i, I had an advantage being allergic to condoms in in college in my ho years and my <laughs> my heavily dating years because I couldn't really be like, I couldn't really just be fucking someone. Like I kind of had to be like, Hey, here's the situation. Like you can either like, we can be friends or we can keep fucking, but you can't be fucking other people. Those guys did cheat on me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> those were, that was like actually time period I got cheated on. But, um, but it was like kind of forcing me to be like, do you want to be like exclusive with me right away? Because I was like, I can't be having these. Yeah, because my pH gets up in my thrown shit. off by basically just about anything. So that one of the one of the ways that I found out that a boyfriend cheated on me was like, I was such in a rage, and I was like, Look at my pussy! She's not well. She has a cough. Like he wouldn't believe. He's like, Why are you thinking I cheated on you? I just came back from a trip from San Francisco, and I was like, you, We need to sit down and talk. And he was like, Why? I was like, You need to tell me why. And he's like, why are you saying this? Eventually he fessed up and of course- Yeah. Like, Wait, what did you have? Um, I just had a really, um, I had a bacterial infection. It wasn't like a true STD. She but had that it, BV, baby. Actually, it wasn't even BV. It was like, but there was a reaction. I had a reaction yeah. and it was, you know what I mean? Not at its best. Yeah. But I remember like, like pulling my lips apart and be like, look, <laughs> oh my God. Like you- That me, vicious? Like, yeah. And I was like, if you don't tell me right now, like, and this is before I even, I didn't know if it was an STD or not. I was like, if you don't tell me right now, I'm going to go to the doctor and have him tell me. So he eventually had to fess up. I hope eventually the doctor told you too. Yeah, but he was like, oh, <laughs> it's just like, you know, your pH is thrown, blah, blah, blah. But that happens when, you know, like, yeah, yeah, when someone is ha sleeping with someone else and they're reintroducing like a new like element in there. But yeah, like that's a... Uh, that's a really it's like even in poly relationships, they call it fluid bonding. You have to like tell someone you're well, that's what I was talking if about. If you're going to with... be putting each other's junk well, in each other's junk, you should just you got to tell people. Well, that's what my friend went through because she had to do in vitro. And it's uh, I guess apparently a lot of women get miscarriages because of this, because on a molecular level, they reject their partner's like baby, basically. So that they have to extract like white blood cells from the man oh, they yeah. prepare it and then they inject the woman with it <laughs> and so i was like why can't i do this even without wanting to get pregnant with my partner today or wh with whoever yeah. i date just so there's more of like an attraction maybe or that my pussy won't reject that's him. a good maybe that's the, that's our we, trash tuesday venture that we is... should all do it with each other no we should no we need less with her <laughs> <laughs> give her take some out of her of course <laughs> Uh, I can't handle sitting between the sexual tension, oh, yeah. but um, I think it's called like lymphocyte immunization. That's therapy. a great idea. A I would yeah. so do that. Although I do not need it right now. Like I last night we were we were like at a restaurant and I was just like staring at Dave. I was like, you're so hot right now. He's like, you must be ovulating. And I'm like, you're right. I think I'm like, I have my ovulation goggles on because I was just like, <laughs> so when you're ovulating, isn't your like discharge boop, boop, like yeah. Poopy, yeah? They say egg white. Yeah. And you see it on the rim. You're the like, rim. wow, I am thick and creamy oh. today. Are you 
the rim of the penis? Yeah. Like the penile? You never look down and you're like, what did we make? What kind of cake batter did we make? <laughs> oh my God. Never? Yes, of course. Yeah. And then you, you, you're you like, oh, suck it. And you're like, I got to chew. I don't <laughs> chew. No. Well, I'm spitting or swallowing my own. Okay. Uh, Wait, I saw this thing today. Have you heard of like the lesbian master doc or something? There's something that's going around, but basically. Is it an STD? It's a common <laughs> theme amongst women to say. I, th- I feel like I've heard all of us say this even. Like I'm attracted to women, but I couldn't see myself with a woman. And Basically, this girl was pointing out that the reason we feel that way is because we were not raised to see ourselves with women. We're so raised to, like, see us ourselves dating men. Like, that's what's been... We need lesbian Disney princesses. Yes! Mm. So I just thought that was interesting. That really rang true for me. This could be population control. This could be what we need. We don't... Wait, I think we need the... Don't they say the population is going down? We need more population? Allegedly. Depends where you are. We need more again? Yeah. Oh, I this thought was like two years ago. Isn't his capitalist daddy saying that? Oh, you're right. Fuck. I know. Oh. <laughs> they got you again. Esther. Oh, they always get me. I think no. wor- world population is going up. I think oh. Western world population is going down. Yeah. yeah. The well, we're all women. freezing our eggs. It'll happen. Just wait it out. Yeah. And <laughs> also we're just doing it really late. <laughs> OK, so basically, this is what I'm trying to get at. I have felt r- relatively straight my whole life i've even been quote unquote diagnosed is like oh no you're definitely a straight girl by girls i am trying to you know have stuff with right they're like no kalela like you're pretty like your body you're dry but i'm really gonna power through it and i this summer i am committed to having a full because i've only but had why sex you- with women in the context of a threesome but why are you powering through something if you're naturally not? I think no, you because should, I think because by the, the time, habit. yeah, that's what she's saying. Like we've been maybe programmed, and I want to maybe fully get there with just a woman without a man in the room, have full week of sex with a girl that I that I find attractive, and see if I can feel that. And yes. when my friend though, when my friend got her second this. knuckles in me, I went. <laughs> because you're not used to it. See, no, Andy, it just you, wasn't like after all of it. I went. Uh, but see, you finally got there, right? I, I have, I haven't been that far with just a woman. Yeah. it's always been a man. In the but room. I told you what she did to kind of like plant the seeds, where she <laughs> yeah. was like, she was like, well, don't you think? And it's kind of what you're saying. So this could be all a ploy. There's one lesbian on TikTok that's trying to fuck all of you guys. But, <laughs> well, I believe in this. This rings really true. I think. But we she, all need, her thought was her exposure. Her line to me was like, the fact that you've never felt gay or attracted to a woman. Don't you think that's like? because of your internalized like homophobia. And I was like, what? She's like, don't you think the fact you haven't even thought about it makes you gay? And I was like, what? Ooh, that is some. And it was like, I was like, uh, I do. Think All right, put straight. him in. OK, I think. Yeah, I do think you are. Straight. I you see. Me I read gay, though. I do feel like I read gay. No, no, no. no. You give me very I'm masculine. Straight. I have testosterone. Yeah, but masculine, how you present is definitely yeah. has nothing to do with your sexuality, because like you like feeling energy wise, super straight to me. Yeah, I'm not trying to. Dave is usually like he's usually so <laughs> sensitive <laughs> to <Nasty> any. <laughs> Wait, not my type. Oh. <laughs> Dave is usually so sensitive to like any joking about me being, you know, poor guy. It's <laughs> like not fully straight. But you mean the, the man that knows you the most the, takes it the most serious. <laughs> but Wonder then why. this weekend he was like talking about like you know how he may die one day before me and i was like no and then he was like well then you can finally go off and do what you really want to do and have be with a woman i was like oh he is open to it <laughs> okay. i'm gonna kill him first <laughs> you start making him smoothies Come here, Dave. <laughs> uh, no but i do envy you for having a younger boyfriend because like whenever the reality sets in that dave is older than me i like fr- i freak yeah. out well, there are like parent replacement basically too. Yeah. I feel like I remember when I was, when I fell in love with my, my like crazy boyfriend where we were like, we were like our most heightened get police called on us relationship. <laughs> it's just so weird how different I can be. Like, I'm like, what a like fucking poser I am that I can be that psycho in that relationship and then just never at all with Todd. 
It's just like how I'm just absorbing these guys' personalities. Like, what's wrong with me? No, you're not absorbing. You're maybe reacting. Yeah. Like, I've been in situations where I'm like, I never thought that someone could bring this ugly side out of me, but they have. It takes two to tango. Is yeah, so exactly. Real. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's so real, but then you're just not like that at all. Well, that's me. why, like, I have to feel like I have to be careful with the way I talk about all these people because, well, I want to be careful about it because I really don't want to be like, placing blame or like whatever you know maybe some girls into that i don't know <sighs> um but when i first like was really felt like safe with him it changed kind of quick but when i first like fell in love with him i remember the relief of it was like oh i'm gonna have someone and he was very like paternal to me like he was really like kind of told me what to do and and like dominated me mm-hmm. and um yeah it was okay it wasn't, it's not really my thing, but um, I tried. No, I just felt like honestly raped. I really oh, felt like God. I was just being yeah, raped for three years. Big on, difference. Being really like forced into things. Oh but gosh. there were benefits to it because I learned a lot about myself and also he wasn't raping me, but but it just wasn't, I, I don't, it wasn't for me. But what did you, well, I felt like, I remember just like crying and being like, oh my God, someone's going to be there when my dad dies. That's how I felt. Like oh, someone's going to be able to I like see. take care of yeah. me. Like it was really like, I didn't even like, I had, I'd been repressing that feeling for so long that I was just like, that was like the big relief for me. And then having a younger boyfriend is like, he's going to be around when everyone dies. He's going to be here when I die. Yes. Do you feel like that's because that partner that you were with was almost like a father figure replacement? Kind of. And I, yeah, he would, yeah, I'm like, he'll pick up whatever. And not that like Todd isn't, it's just, I'm not like unhealthy like that anymore. I've done like a lot of work on myself where sometimes I'll have dreams where Todd and I break up and in the dream, I have healthy responses to it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like this sucks. This is the worst, but I'm going to be okay. You know, like I, even in my dreams, I'm like living it out. Wow, you I'm guys, not that mad at him in the morning. My dreams are fucking me up again. And I feel like it's, they're sabotaging me over and over again. I'm starting to dream of people I would have never thought about like in a romantic or sexual way. But what happens in the dream is that you fall in love with this random person who's just in your life like an ancillary figure like for instance fancy like oh, i could well, have sorry the fancy. married guy and his fucking i know going through some stuff or who, uh, right the, the, what, what, what was your son's name um what is it oh, richie? richie okay let's suppose richie i just <laughs> met like richie son. right richie is just a guy helping out here yeah so let's I suppose think. i just met richie today he took our order for your order for sweet green and tonight <laughs> i dream about richie i'm not kidding you when i say that Tomorrow, I am fully in love with Richie. Yes. And the whole week, I am trying to get over Richie. Yeah. I'm doing everything in my power. And if I see Richie here, I am not even looking at him because my feelings are real. I would have this literally, sorry, in middle school and in elementary school. <laughs> you child. <laughs> and it would be like the guy that there's no vibes at all. Like, uh-huh. ew. And then suddenly you're like, what? I'm in love with that kid? Like, ew. So th- it is so powerful. It's really fucked up. It's sabotaging. My dreams are sabotaging me. And I think that that's it's been happening so much. And I wake up and I'm like, why but Jungian theory of dreams is that it's all every person in your dream is an aspect of yourself and your own personality so maybe it's a part of your personality that you're falling in love with Ooh, maybe he represents something of yeah of yourself i like but that. everyone in your dream is you that is such a relief for me to hear so maybe i'm falling in love with myself yeah there's something saying. that he like some sort of young part of yourself that you see in him my recurring dreams are so back in action <laughs> of like I have to go back to high school because I didn't actually graduate. And then I'm like, it's either I have that one or Which I have- Which is so funny because like, literally who cares? <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, well, like that would be gangster if we found out you didn't have a high school grad. Like you'd be a hero. I know. Like, that- she doesn't even have a high school diploma. This girl's <laughs> and then I like, I am like in this position where I'm like begging, like, no, I really don't want to. Like I, I trust me, like I want to go to LA. Like I can just handle it. And then, but then- recently there's been a change in the dream where i'm like maybe it wouldn't be so bad to go back where it's kind of weird i'm like what does this mean and then the other big recurring one is like 
waking up on the last day of, of high school and like getting ready for school on the last day and I'm like what is that like why do I want one last chance to like stunt and like put on a cute outfit and like shower I was just had such a different high school I was just dodging jizz from teacher oh my god one more day here oh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> a recurring dreams that I have um I don't have like a full understanding of like or maybe it's just based on like fear right my reoccurring dream is that I'm behind the blocks and I'm about behind in a swimming pool. I'm behind lane four and I'm about to swim my 200 fly. Everybody is expecting me to win. Everyone knows this is my race, but I'm in my 38 year old body and I have not swam a fucking lap of butterfly in like 15, however long, but the pressure is on and I'm trying to tell everyone, hey guys, like I haven't trained, but no one is listening or believing me. That dream I get at least like twice a month and it's freaking terrifying. What do you think that means? Do you think that comes from like if you haven't swam lately and you're like feeling like you need to get up on it? I have no idea. Well, it's like obviously you feel unprepared for something. You're yeah, unprepared. Pressure. People are expecting things from you. Maybe you're expecting things from yourself. If you're everyone, you're the people also putting the pressure on. Them. Oh, young. You're man. the swim cap. I'm everything. everything. My goggles. I'm the. I'm the block. I I'm have the water. I think my version of that is sometimes I have dreams where I don't remember my jokes. Oh, I've had that where I just don't remember any joke and I'm just up there like. Oh, yeah. We're, oh, my God. Like, before a big show, I will so have that dream where I'm up on stage. And I'm just kind of like, uh, like thinking I'm going to improvise a whole set. And I'm like, why did I do that? Why? And then I wake up and I'm just it's so scary. But isn't even just big show such a nightmare? Like, yeah, just like said, before a big show, it's like, why are we still doing this to ourselves? We've been doing this for so long. Well, because like. You know, for example, like my show's coming up in New York or like if I'm headlining it, if I have to do like a long set, like 45 minutes to an hour and I haven't in a while, I definitely will in my dreams be like, oh, there's I I can't. It's impossible. I think my first set at a on a weekend, I'm always so I'm like, yeah, you just don't you haven't been there. You don't have like the muscle memory of like, yeah, like I don't standing believe, on the stage. Yeah, I yeah, don't believe like, I'll be able to do it. And sometimes I will beforehand like I'll. I've been not writing out set lists because I'm like, sometimes I think I sabotage. Them. But sometimes I'm trying to write a set list out and I'm like, I get to like four jokes. I'm like, what? <laughs> do I have any more jokes? Like, what? I'm like, I do this every night. Like, where's the rest? <laughs> where's the 55 other minutes? Like, what the hell's going on? I can't believe, I wonder, I if I'm everyone in my dreams, I'm like, so in the last day of school one, I'm, I'm also my mom making me a turkey sandwich in the morning. Yeah. Like, that's cute. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Yeah, do you have other recurring ones? Um, not really. I used to have dreams in like specific places, and sometimes I'll have a dream where I feel like I'm like, oh, I'm here again, and then I'm like, I never was. The I'll mm -hmm. wake up and be like, I wasn't there. I've been taking melatonin, so I have. I don't know what's going uh, on. I see. I'm not having a normal. Esther, mm -hmm. I came across a poem that um <laughs> really wrote? made me think of you in so many ways. Because remember, Annie was like, you brace. When someone lifts their hand, yeah. you immediately brace. Yes. And it's you not think, that great. But, and it's not even because you've it's ever. It's just like we've just been hit a lot. So we're like. <laughs> yeah. So it's she was like, well, we were wondering like, oh, why is it that, you know, you brace even though you've never been hit? And she was like, oh, it's because you're small. Right. And so I came across this poem and it's about a spider, but it's called The Crime of Being Small. And I was in tears, like bawling. I my really eyes thought out. we were gonna be making fun of her. I thought it is. Be You're the spider. You know how you hate spiders? <laughs> no. You hate spiders, yeah. but basically one of the lines in there, it's like, I'm so sorry for scaring you, but I didn't know. Can we get Rick in here. <laughs> She's be yelled at. <laughs> I didn't know that being seen would cost me my life. You're just so tiny. And That's I think you so should stop sad. hating spiders because kind of you're like you just the become spider, spider of, girl. You just have a bunch of spiders in your house now. You're the small thing. It no. can happen. It happens to the best of us. Sometimes because all of a sudden there's just rodents and spiders can house. kill us. You can kill them. This is enough. I you can't you can't be thinking about dying all the time. I'm I don't. But when I see a black widow in my yard, I'm like, this is real. Like I need to protect my little donut and my little Dave <laughs> and me. <laughs> Wait, but that's that poem does sound really good. Should yeah, let's hear it? it. That was basically the line was, "I'm sorry for scaring you, but I didn't know being seen would cost me my life." 
And that is the line that, that made is me cry. Really sad. Really sad. Is it sad, sad that she right? thought of you? How does it feel that someone read that and thought of you? Feels really good. <laughs> the just, fact that someone thought of me feels really good. I would beat her ass if she said that about me. <laughs> that you're a baby spider. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're just a baby spider. Just accept who you are. Okay, I wanted to ask you guys. Do you, in your day-to-day life, I know, Annie, like, you're very chatty with, like, the DMV person, the bank teller. You're just friendly and, like, chatty. Yeah. But, like, in in passing. Donna, you, am I right, Aid? What's up, girl? <laughs> <laughs> do you smile at strangers? I live in Venice, so the strangers, you can't smile at them. <laughs> 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 it's crazy over there. <laughs> and then you think someone's not, and then you smile, and then they there's no teeth, and you go, oh, <laughs> oh boy. I almost always, if I'm like being conscious and aware, smile at women. That's about it. I don't know if it's for reasons. Do you go like this to men? <laughs> no, I just probably look down and like. So I, I smile. I smile at strangers all the time. But I think um, um, I was reading this thing about the reason that in America we smile at strangers is because we live in a high uncertainty culture. Yeah. And so we basically have to acknowledge like, hey, I'm not a threat to yes. you. But I totally feel that, yeah. Because in Korea or in Japan and certain Asian countries, not the Philippines, Filipinos smile at like a tree. Like we just all are always smiling. But in certain Asian countries, like that's that that are already considered extremely polite societies, they don't smile at each other like at all. It's not considered like a polite thing to do. Because they have a more, um, I guess, certain culture. They know it's not like over here, like we really are afraid of a lot of things. So you kind of have to soften like your surrounding. You smile. I'm not a threat. It's true. And I've noticed like guys, they do the nod at each other a lot, uh-huh. it's, which is almost like their version of a smile. I like the nod. But I feel like as a girl, the nod is kind of hard. It's almost like, let's go. I'm going to give you a hand job in the. Yeah, you can't. It's always like, it's like, I just feel like guys are just like, and I I could be wrong, I'm not a guy, but I just feel like guys are just always, they're looking at every woman going, like, would I fuck her? And not all guys, but like, majority of guys. Like, would I fuck her? Would she fuck me? Like, Mm. no matter what. You can't smile. It's like, but in New York, I had to like, squash my friendliness because it's really looked down upon in New York. And if you're friendly, like if you're at going to get a bagel at the bodega and you are like, how are you? Like people be like, shut up, bitch. Like you, <laughs> we're trying to go. It's like rude to be polite because it takes more time, you know? Yeah, like even people are like, boom, boom, which I understand. Like holding doors open in Korea, Japan is not considered like polite. It's not over here. You're like, oh, what a oh nice my young God. man. What a nice young lady. What if we get this wrong? We like go to Korea and we're just smacking people in the face with doors. Although that does sound, there is something nice about that interaction with strangers of like holding a door. Like, it's not that they don't hold doors open. It's just not considered polite because it's almost the baseline. Mm, like, I see. Like, you know, it's it's already a very polite society. Um, but over here, we have to do things to make our society more polite. But I used to date a guy that hated that I smiled at people. He's he just it drove him absolutely nuts. He was like, "You're sending a message." I'm like, "To who?" To that, you know, decrepit 80-year-old man, like, who am I sending? He's like, yeah, I just don't like that you do that. Like, you just, you know, you're always, and I'm like, dude, like, you got to work on your shit. But now I'm thinking after what you said, Annie, like, maybe, maybe he's onto something. Maybe, like, dudes are kind of calculating that going through the list. Can I fuck her? Will she fuck me? How do I get her to the back? I might be wrong, but. No, I definitely think there's truth to that. Yeah. It's totally like a will she fuck me thing. I mean, I've talked about this before. Like there is like our peers who I've like hung out with at comedy clubs, had like great conversations with where I'm like, oh my God, like you're my peer. We're talking. And then I hear like weeks later that that person said like I could fuck her. And I'm like, because we chatted? What is going on? Yeah. What is this? I know. And then it's like, so I, was I supposed to be a bitch the whole time? That was what I was supposed to be doing to you? Yeah. I think what killed me not wanting to smile anymore is dudes telling me to smile more. Yeah. Like we're saying, because like I kind of have like a bitchy face. Um, total. <laughs> I have an RBF, like resting bitch face since <laughs> the day I was born. So I've always been told like, why do you look so angry? Why do you look? I'm like, so I maybe a part of me is always trying to like compensate for that. But then when they're like, you should smile more. I'm like, that's. It's just annoying. It's like, I don't want to be smiling. Like, why do I need to smile right now? It's almost like it's so ridiculous. I can't even 
justify that with a reaction. It's like telling someone to smile more. It's like, are you Santa Claus? Like, why? <laughs> what? Yeah, what am I getting out of this? That's it. Are, are we having a no smile summer then? Yes. Okay, no smile I'll summer. I'll try, but I smile a lot. You're just real nice to strangers, but I don't know if you're necessarily like, pat, you know. I'm Wait, trying not to. I just realized something I totally forgot. When I'm with my guy friends, I'm so much more friendly and smiley and interactive. And I realized that after like a while, I was like, oh, it's because I feel like safe and secure, you know? And I feel social. I do think there is something to like, when you're just a girl on your own, even though I would love for this to be this like fun when world I make, where I'm happy and friendly and it's like, it's just not really- When safe. I make money, like if I have a good weekend, I call myself Annie Bonus Letterman. I'm I'm twirling in the streets. I'm so nice to everyone. I'm like, hello. There's like birds chirping. I'm like, hello, hello, hello. I got new shoes on. I'm like, what's up? You guys, I forgot to tell you of breaking news. Okay, so you know how a couple weeks ago I was talking about someone in my life who I wasn't maybe approving of their dating situation and I really wanted to intervene and be like, this, this, and this, and this, and poke and you know prod and whatever and show them how you know how right i am well i backed off and literally yesterday in a conversation she said all the things i was dreaming of her to say she was like i'm mad at this person that they would do this to me blah 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 she just it happened i let go yeah and instead of pushing the narrative at her she found it on her own and i am like beaming i'm so yeah. happy and i feel bad for her but it's like yes and you know what your move is, right? When she tells you all of this stuff is to not pile on, is to <laughs> sit back because then she'll want to defend him, right? Right. So what you do is like, oh shit, okay. Oh, tell me more and just keep pulling it out of her. So she is telling it to you. The moment you pile on back, she's going to be Are you sure though? Him. Because when, when I broke up with that one guy and then my sister-in-law was like, we were all so, I was like, oh, she was like so happy. And I was like, oh, were you worried about me? And she was like, every day. <laughs> all this every day I that's was like, not a pile oh, that though. made me feel so good i was like oh my god okay it, it was so validating i was like i could never go back to this person i was done already though yeah but that's not a pylon it, like a pylon is I know more like a fucking well they always get back together i, uh -huh. I know a girl she was like my yeah my boyfriend she this was very recent she was like my boyfriend blah 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 blah, blah. he's he's he yelled i think he might have this or that she was like diagnosing him and stuff i was like well and i was like smart enough to go when you're ready to talk shit, I'm ready. Because I already was like, who is this fucking guy? I, didn't, I wasn't that close of friends with her, but I was like, who's this guy? <laughs> Literally marrying him now. I'm like. That's what I'm saying. <gasps> That's why you got to hold back. I, like, I would have been so fucked if I had said stuff. How certain are we that this friend is really like done with this guy? It feels good. It feels really good to me. Like I, and I didn't quite pile on, but I didn't, I was like. I think I, my re my main reaction was like, I'm really glad to hear you say all this. Like, yes, like, this is great. You should be angry, like, and all that. Where I, I wanted to, I didn't know what words quite were right to use to get more, cause it's out of, aside from just saying like, more, more. Um, you should send her that extreme song, More Than Words. <laughs> yeah, great song. <gasps> um, it's good though, cause doesn't it feel, it's like there is, I think such a healthy thing about Letting people have their own experience. You don't want to steal people's like experiences from that. It doesn't work anyway, but you like it's so much better when people come to it themselves. And yeah, you're not going to be like, he's great or anything. Yeah. But. You know what, 90s song still makes me feel my feels because you said extreme. Um, Every fucking song. Mr. Big, uh, oh, To yeah. Be With You. <laughs> Why is that song still? I don't hit? know that at all. You guys, I, I've said this on here before and it's it's still true. Whole Foods plays the best '90s music. It's always like oh, all grocery stores, not just. It's Whole like Foods. Tracy Chapman. I'm like, I'm like hmm. in a fast Hits car. Ya. I'm like, okay, I'm so at a window. I've come to a window. It's I have this theory that whoever is making the playlist for all of the grocery stores, all the Safeway selects, is a freaking mastermind and it isn't some random occurrence that every time you're in a grocery store there's at least one song that hits you so deep that puts you back in a state of pure nostalgia yeah. and you're like looking at fruit and you're like. I feel weird. You yeah, know, but but the Whole Foods does every song. Every song is on. <laughs> Todd and I were like, and I said that's. Me. <laughs> da, 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 da. 
breakfast at Tiffany or whatever that song is. You know, and we were like, we were like going crazy. Yeah. This girl was laughing at us because we we're like singing to each other. I mean, we we're like going nuts. Wasn't that their only hit? I have don't even know the name of the band. Oh, I, I, I think it wrote one hit wonder. Yeah. It was around like. 90s. Yeah. Mid 90s. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's just so fun. And Todd, I don't know why he knows everything I know. What? I think it's because his parents are very close to my age. <laughs> Wait, how far just apart knows, are you and his parents? No, his parents are like 16 years older than me, but he's 11. Yeah, but they're but they're Asian, so like 16. Asians hang on to the classics harder. His parents are in their late 50s, and I'm turning 40. Dave is 45, so Dave is peers with Todd's parents. No, he's 10 years, six, 11 years younger. Well, you know, my grandma is 82 and my dad is 80. Yeah, it's so weird. I know. Well, Mark Maron went mm -hmm. on stage and he was like, my dad just turned 84. I was like, I went on stage after my, like, is anyone else surprised that I have the same age? I thought <laughs> Mark's dad would be 100 years older than my father. I mean, not not to um, oh, yeah. one up you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Here right. we go. Let's do it. Hit us. But my dad was older than my grandpa. That's why. By uh, a lot. <laughs> Not just one or two. This years. is why she was hooking up with her stepbrother. Do you understand? It was a confusing family <laughs> dynamic and system. I love when Has anyone brought like come to you? Because you know, like we talk about stuff and then people be like, oh yeah, I relate to that. Me too. Has anyone come to you and been as a step? Yes. Sibling? I you know who my twin flame is? I found my twin flame and I didn't at a family even reunion? have to try. <laughs> no, I found her at Esther's house. She's my twin flame. She is oh, not. She is my twin she's flame. She's definitely not yours. She she's my imaginary friend. <laughs> she is your imaginary friend. She's my imaginary friend. But Rumi, Neely, and I, our lives are so parallel. Yeah. Everything from the way we were brought up, our fathers, like it's almost shocking. Yeah. Everything that comes out of her mouth is a, something that I lived through. And um it's kind of amazing good, right? yeah. yeah you guys are so similar it is like it's kind of fun Esther's to observe with, that's so sad they're my she was your twin blade? no they're my dolls <laughs> <laughs> I except Rumi is an actual doll though <laughs> oh my god I look at her I'm like how <laughs> much more gorgeous can someone be and she's so tall and just she is my imaginary friend I made her up you really did and she's so <laughs> she's your funny She's my, she's... Do you remember Drop Dead Fred? I love it Drop Dead so Fred. It's my top five favorite movies. Have you seen it recently? Is it still good? Um, It's not great, but <laughs> it doesn't matter because once you turn it on, you, you're back is there into like, your child's But is there like head. blackface in it or anything? You know, like every movie, you like watch a child movie, you're like, oh, they were just like, they're in blackface? <laughs> and remember it was like Phoebe Cates, right? Yeah. So Phoebe Cates was in it and Phoebe Cates is half Filipina. So oh, is she? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was, I don't know if she's half, but she's part Filipina. So that was like a big thing for me. Like, and she's oh. still married to Kevin Klein, which is so cool. Right, it's so cute. Mm. That's another one of my favorite movies. Fish French, called Wanda? No, oh. French Election? Kiss. The one with him oh, and Meg. She's like, I've seen three movies. Are they going to cycle through? <laughs> <laughs> Election is so good, Psycho. though. Was it Election's called French great. Kiss with Meg Ryan? Yes. Oh, that was such a great movie. Yeah, I always liked Kevin Klein. Um, so I got some questions for us. I went on our little Instagram and I got some pretty interesting questions. Okay. Some are advice, some are, you know. 99% are fuck, marry, kills. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so this guy is asking, should I tell a girl that I'm not very experienced before we hook up or just go for it? Which I think is a really good question. It depends what kind of girl. Because if it's me, I love honesty and I like, I'm such a, I love a virgin. Like I love an inexperienced <laughs> boy. Like when I was in high school, I only, because I was so afraid of STDs, I only had sex with virgin boys. Did we think boys. she's going to say Esther too? <laughs> uh, also, what are, if, th what, if this is STDs, what's just STDs, no quotes? I Because STDs are fucking cool now. Yeah. Oh. Also, they're called it's like in my mouth. <laughs> they're called. They used to be called like VD. Yeah. Like yeah. Real disease. No, but one of my favorite role play um, characters with Bobby. He's Virgin Brandon. He's a fifty-year-old man who's never had sex, and he's it's really shy. It's so funny to role play. He's the exact age you. <laughs> 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 to be like, oh, you're an elderly man, uh, but it is actually your age. He's never had sex, and he's just really shy. You and would want to take like a old virgins. Virginia. I don't care. I just love virgins. <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounded Do not. so bad. Wait, it so sounds good. It sounds you sound like a 9-11 hijacker. I will listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wait. Wait. <laughs> wait, I want to get canceled for this. Look, when I say virgin, I'm not thinking of young boys. No, I'm thinking of you any... made it very clear. <laughs> 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 so this is something when a guy says, hey, I'm nervous or inexperienced, like come to mommy. I will what teach you everything. What if we rename the show? I'm getting um, so hot. <laughs> what if we rename the show? Imagine if a guy said that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's just a whole, every episode is just imagine if a guy said that. Well, you don't have to imagine because they say it all the time. <laughs> but is this a terrible thing? I, I wouldn't mind at no, all. No, I see that. T- I used to like. That could be yeah, hot. If like you like people. the guy and they're inexperienced, are you kidding? That's hot. Because you you can mold them into mm. whatever you need them to be. But you I know, know what? what's so much hotter, though. What? When you think a guy isn't going to know. Yes. And then he knows. There was more. this kid I hooked up with years ago. He was like, uh, he was at the coffee shop. He was my coffee shop guy. Oh my god! And he was just so young, and so like he was from Michigan. Does that explain it? Yeah, like a no, guy yeah, from wholesome. Michigan. You know, just like oh, and um, I might ruin this story by saying a young George Kimmel, but it <laughs> was not a George Kimmel. I promise. Did you not think that, Fancy? I thought that. Ew. Um. <laughs> Anyway. I killed my own boner just saying that, honestly. <laughs> but he, but that would be surprising too, wouldn't it? <laughs> it probably would be. Let's just say I've never had one of those office dreams with George. <laughs> I've been having. <laughs> I've never had to avert my eyes from George. I've always been <laughs> eye contact. <laughs> but he was really a very talented young man. He was really cute. I see. I like that. And he was like a PA at the time, so he would like. He would be like, I have my work truck. He'd be like near the comedy club. He's like, come out. We'd like hook up in the truck. It was cute. When it's unsuspecting. But then I would go back in because I was so used to like being friends with guys and like male comics. I'd be like, oh yeah, the, this kid just fingered me in his car. And they're like, ew. I'm like, you guys say stuff like this to me. Yeah. You, I just bro down way too hard. <laughs> they were like, ew. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, you know what I need I to stop doing? Cool. <laughs> I thought you think it was cool. My wait, guy we were gonna pound. With my guy friends, <laughs> think, wait, cool. this is actually a, a real problem I'm having, like with people that I'm dating. Um, I talk like I'm in, I'm on the show. I, I, pussy this, pussy that, <laughs> asshole this. You know, fucking the ass, like a so and, fuck me. <laughs> yeah, and it's honestly probably such a turnoff, but I forget that p- regular people outside of you guys, like. You, they don't work well to that. We're turned off. No, I'm, no, I'm, just wait, <laughs> I'm definitely wait, not. I'm <laughs> but it's like we, they don't take to that. Like I forget that I you can't talk to people like that. Be for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Esther, you wouldn't. What would you do? Like, would you want a guy to tell you or not tell you? It's so tricky because one time, like in college, there was this guy that I was hanging out with, and I remember he told me he was a virgin, and it did kind of freak me out, but only because I really associated that with being religious and I'm very anti-religion because I'm the devil um but like that was and I just don't think there was a vibe there so I think that is like a specific incident but when when I hear you kind of like when I hear you say it but like a guy being like just so you know I'm not that experienced there is something exciting there of like well, great. He's not some like fuck boy, you know, and like you said, like you can train them. Like I believe that you can have good sex. If you like a person, it's good sex. Like you will make it good. You mm-hmm. you will find your ways to make it good. I, you with no <laughs> pillow is so weird. Me with a hoisted up pillow too though. It's like the pillow. It's like I, I'm in a fight. I'm, I'm in a, I'm wrestling right now. I'm on the show Glow. I love that show. I actually... I'm a little icked out, Annie, by the one that you like, where a guy where you don't think he's going to have experience and then does. I'm like, ew. I'm like, what? I don't know. There's something about that that I wouldn't want. I don't know why. Mm, I I'm, I agree with Annie. There's almost just like a- Oh my God, I was so proud of him. I was like, my God. <laughs> no, because then it's like, wait, you're playing this like shy little boy to trick No, he me. is shy. He just is shy, but also good in bed. <laughs> he's just like he's a- not tricking no I came to him let's be real <laughs> he was like my I think I was I can't remember I had a really good line for him <laughs> I can't remember what it was oh I had I used to have cards that said 
like little those little moo cards that I used to put. I would say, um, follow me on Twitter. Or no, I said I would go. I think you're hot, but really, I just want you to follow me on Twitter. And then I was like, you don't need to follow me on Twitter. I just said, I gave it to him. Cute. Or whatever. He was cute, but um. But I have a question for you guys. Uh, are you thinking about this guy, hypothetical guy that, uh, as it's Andres, younger? <laughs> is, is he a younger person, and you guys are older, or are you guys no, same age? And same like, age. You know what this guy? Yeah, this guy. Twenty. Oh no no no! I say I I'm not. This like twenty five thirty. We know when I'm answering these questions about virgins, like I could never like. My age. He's that George like, Kimmel I thing, just, I'm not over it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was really awful of you. I killed every boner in this room. I realize that now. No, I'm just asking because if this guy is whatever in high school and then once, you know, oh, I feel like very different than anything. I think, okay, so this is what I think. I think if you're going to be like, whatever's going to make you less nervous, like if you're, if you like being vulnerable and open, it's really about what you want. It's really not about like, if she doesn't like what you do, or doesn't like you being honest, that's not like the person that you're gonna continue with anyway. So it's like, if you're gonna be fumbly and nervous and if you're inexperienced, you're inexperienced. You can't pretend to not be inexperienced. Correct. Yeah, so it's but like, everything guys have always heard is like, you have to be so confident because that's- Yes, but if you're not confident, how are you gonna be confident? Do you know what I mean? Maybe if sometimes telling the truth makes you more confident. Mm. I mean, look, if you can fake being confident, fake being confident for sure because What's the difference between being confident and faking being confident? I right? would if come you can in fake with, it, you can be confident. I would come in with a game plan. I would try and learn up the best that I can. Yeah, read she like, comes first. Like making sure. <laughs> yeah, just that, read she comes first section. Here, I will say to this guy, like the one thing that I love is when dudes ask me like how I like it. Yeah. Because it's like, it doesn't matter how experienced you are. This is a completely different body than the last girl you were with. So it's like... My friend, I won't say his name, uh, um, but he was basically like, when I'm with a girl, I'm her remote control. I'm, I'm sorry, she is my remote control. Like, I do whatever she wants. And I tell her that. Like, you're my remote control. Tell me what you like and I'll do it. And I'm like, that is so hot. Like, I love that. So I think experience or not, you can do a lot of things wrong. So just be very attentive to like... The girl. Also communicating, which can it's be so hard. It yeah. can be hard. It can be so hard. It's so hard to say what you want. Like sometimes I like I wouldn't even know. I was just like uh basically a sock for a decade. <laughs> yeah, when you're younger, it's hard. yeah, like so I'm like, what I want. I don't know what I want. No, but now it's like communication is like yeah. I'm so good at it that and it's never awkward or weird where I'm like, Hey, can you sit up and can you do this instead? Like Can you do a sit I, up? You're like, Oh <laughs> no, but I read it tell him it's like <laughs> Don't lay flat on top of me and finger me. Sit up. Like, I want, you know, it's a... Uh... <sighs> We're both thinking about that uh, sit up, aren't we? So we can't this do sit it. up? <laughs> no, I'm just imagining, like, he's, like, sitting up, like... <laughs> um, there's you don't a... want him lying on you while he's... That's kind of hot. I don't... I like a next two fingering. No, because you're not doing, you don't have full access, full range of motion. Like, you're just not doing it to the best. And he's just of your looking ability. at your face? What is he looking yeah, at? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's like, oh, you're like that? Able... Annie. You can't do it when he's laying flat on top of me. You're trying be a to... great lesbian. Let's be Honestly, yeah, I do have lesbian be. dreams sometimes where I'm crushing it. It's like I'm a guy in it, and I'm like, I am like the man. I do feel like I could just woo a bitch. That's why I'm like, you really would. I, I think, think I you could. I, yeah. I think you probably wooed many and like not know this about it. This is a shame. This is a crying shame. I could, I know, cause I know what I like. So I'm like, yeah. I could do it to a girl. Um, there's this Like, I think that's just the frustration I've had with guys I've been dating where it's like, you can't, there's certain things you can't communicate. Like um, the lean, you know, that lean in where it's like, you have to lean in, you have to like, it's like a, you have to make me feel at the same time, like safe and scared and small. Yeah, but it's like, how do you explain that to someone? And then if they you tell it to them and then they do it, you're like, oh, I fucking told you to do that. Some people just have it though. But it's hard. I know it feels impossible. I know guys get all mad when girls are like, and then you have to do this and that. Yeah. And like, some I'm like, I want a guy who cries, but not like all the time. <laughs> you know? like, they can't just like have to carry tissues around for him. You know. You guys know that J Cole song, Wet Dreams. No. Mm -hmm. But it's like it basically captures perfectly the first time like Wait, what if guy what if sex. Fancy was listening to that on the way in? Mm -hmm. If he was like, that's actually the song I was listening to, Wet Dream. 
Um, <laughs> but no, you, but it he, sounds right. He talks about just being really inexperienced when he's younger and really wanting to like perform well. And both him and the girl pretending like they had done it before. But then ultimately at the end of the song, they really were just like, they had both not done it before, but they had put so much pressure on themselves. So it's a really <gasps> sweet song. It's called uh, Wet Dreams. The so, guy I lost my virginity was not a virgin. So that would I would never have that experience. So. Same. Um, my Isn't that wife. weird? I feel like that's something to think about too. When you're losing your virginity, like you want to, if you ever want the experience yeah. of losing your virginity with someone. Can you, I tell you, you something? Can only have one shot. No. Oh. I was so scarred by the guy I lost so my. So our hymens back up. <laughs> Todd and I became virgins again. <laughs> the, the first, the first guy that I ever had sex with was a virgin, and um, it was really a terrible experience for me. I didn't feel ready. I thought that oh, we were both doing this for the first time, so maybe it might feel a little bit. Hated it. Didn't have sex for another like year and a half. After. Yeah. And I broke up with him immediately after. I was like, oof, I did not like that. So it's not always great. I don't know. It's it's a lose lose. I think. <laughs> I didn't mind that the person at least had done it like they knew what they were doing. Oh, really? I'm like, that's better. I don't know. I oh, kinda... my God. You probably came when you lost your virginity. Ew, why would you even say that? It's <laughs> like just sexually healthy and it's annoying. No, I Unless... mean, I was, but I didn't go-go. Imagine was coming the healthy. first time you ever have sex. Like, no. is that a thing for girls ever? I, I don't know, but... I don't know either. It looked like it in the notebook, but I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, right. Ugh, the way movies just totally tricked us. Yeah, right. I was like, sex was so bad for so long. Like, it was so painful and so uncomfortable for so long when I was young, yeah. Maybe you had vaginismus. What's up? Like, really, really, just really tight. Well, I am constantly <laughs> in a clench. <laughs> <laughs> on, on that note... <laughs> clench our way out of here this week yeah you guys thank you for being here this for this random sexual i know i literally relationship like, I wanna, talk i was thinking i was like i want to i just want to stop talking about exes it's like i don't care it's like full x episode <laughs> sorry but guys. that's what we have for our life experience your life experience i know everyone relates to it what are you really well, i was thinking though on the way over to like the there were like breakup songs. I was like, I used to love breakup songs and now I'm in love. So I just like songs about how people love each other. Oh, I still love breakup songs. I do too. I don't, they don't slap for me anymore. Really? Mm -mm. Oh, I love them. I'm able to put myself in that mode of desperation, even if I'm not desperate or sad. Todd will play songs for me and like, he'll be like, this is my song for you. Like, that's like what I'm into. 311 Amber. <laughs> <laughs> no, he played uh, Hosier. Um, Something about talking to strangers or something. Oh my God. I can't remember what it is. I'll find out for next episode. Um, you guys, thank you for listening and we will see you click next week. Click the notification week. bell. Yes, click the notification bell. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Mwah. Bye, guys. <laughs>